Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather next 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 is going to take us to around the 4th of February. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the GFS and ESAM ensembles because they run to around a couple of weeks. So we'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks, which gets us well into February. I should get off that for you at the moment. Uh, just say the first video of the day was our uh, 6M upload and we've also released the EC 30 day uh, look. Okay, so please check out those two videos if you'd like to do that. Please like, share, subscribe, and thank you so much, everybody. Uh, for doing that for gas service, we're going to start off with the uh, latest uh, temperature forecast for 10 HPA over the Arctic and North Pole from the ECMWS. So the uh, ECX standing model updates twice a week on a Monday night and a Thursday night. Uh, this is the latest uh, forecast for the next six weeks in terms of these temperature limits over the uh, North Pole. So uh, we've got these blue colours. These are the cold temperatures in the stratosphere at 10 HPA uh, over the Arctic and over the uh, North Pole as well, particularly pushed over towards um, the Atlantic and uh, European side of the pole uh, in, in, uh, in the week we're currently in. She's 24 to 31st of January. So we've got a cold stratosphere at the moment that is associated with the, um, you know, pretty strong polar vortex that we've uh, had previous winter as well. Although not as strong as you'd probably expect, given how cold the stratosphere has been, actually, and, and how strong the zone of winds have been uh, this winter, we probably haven't really seen, like, a PV of doom type pattern uh, so far this winter, because there has been a bit of a disconnect between the troposphere and the stratosphere. Anyway, uh, got cold temperature of stratosphere in the week. Have we go for the week two, which will be the 31st of January to the 7th of February. Um, the cold uh, stratosphere temperatures move more over towards the pole and pole itself, um, and, like, the uh, Siberian and, uh, and Pacific side uh, and northern Canadian side of the Arctic. It begins to lift up, begins to lift temperature up a little bit over on our side of the pole. But nevertheless, still, still cold temperature, still those blue colours weren't truly anch anchored over the Arctic and over the North Pole. Week 3 is the 7th to the 14th of February. Um, by that point, we're beginning to look a little bit stretched with these blue colours, no particularly particular warming of stratosphere going on at this point, but it does look a little bit like the uh, polar vortex at its roots in the stratosphere, but it did get a little bit stretched um, from like Canada over towards uh, Russia and Siberia. There's a slight warming occurring here around the Pacific side of the uh, Arctic, but that's nothing really to get excited about. Just generally uh, stretching out the polar vortex and weakening it maybe a little bit at its roots in the stratosphere there in week three. Week four is the 14th to the 21st of February, when a warming starts to appear, a, a warming of the stratosphere begins to appear um, over towards the Pacific and uh, northwestern Canadian side of the Arctic. Again, notice the blue colours draining away as we go into the middle part of February. Week uh, 5 is 21st, 28th of February. Then we get quite a significant warming uh, being to appear. If I put on the temperature scale, you can see we're going up to around 8 to 10 degrees above average. So quite a significant warming stratosphere. Probably not enough to be a sun stratosphere, but quite a significant warming of the stratosphere beginning to occur there over on the Canadian side, interestingly as well, of the uh, of the North Pole. And then week six is 28th of February to the 7th of March, and that warming intensifies further. Actually, quite a quite a major warming of the stratosphere event taking place, and focus, you know, right over top of the pole as well. So it might be, that might be sort of getting towards SSW uh, territory, although it's always a little bit of a job to decipher with these um you know, with these anomaly maps, because it only goes like 10 degrees or more above that. So, uh, and that is what, what I've got within this dark area here. Um, but it is difficult to say, you know, how much further beyond 10 degrees we're going. For a sun transfer, well, you've probably got to go to around 30 degrees, 40 degrees uh, above average. So, um, like, we are up to 10 degrees or more in that area, above average, but how much more above 10 degrees are we? You know, we wouldn't know until the time. Anyway, it does also quite a significant warming of strategy is uh, being predicted here by um, the uh, EC extended model uh, for the second half of February, particularly later February and into the early part of March. So that might, I mean, that's not going to affect winter because there is a time lag anyway, again, it's some traffic, but that might change the pattern, you know, the long running pattern that we've been in since uh, late August, really, with this area of high pressure just knocking around the west of Europe and the North Atlantic going nowhere fast. 
when we get into the end of February, beginning of March, if we do get that warming up of stratosphere, that might sort of be um, the thing that, that breaks the pattern down and takes into another pattern. What that pattern is remains to be seen. Obviously, if we did get some stratospheric warming, you expect that to be associated with blocking. So as we progress into the spring, we might find, and this is just speculation, no evidence to back this up, but as we go into spring, we might find the uh, area of high pressure that we've had knocking around west of Europe, sort of going north in the end and sort of becoming focused focus for a while anyway around uh, around the Arctic and the North Pole if we begin to generate northern blocking. But it'll be interesting to see if we do get uh, like a major warming of the stratosphere towards the end of February, late, later winter, uh, what impacts, if any, that has on the spring. Because sometimes a sun traffic one will have no effect on um, on the spring, you know, sometimes, uh, or on the on the weather pattern. Sometimes you don't get the propagation from the stratosphere to the troposphere, so it has no effect. So it'll just be interesting to see what happens as we get into the end of February, beginning of March, if we do get a major warming of the stratosphere, will that be the thing that, you know, finally breaks us out of this uh, pattern that we've been in uh, consistently, uh, with the exception of October, maybe, uh, since uh, late August? We shall see. And we'll keep updated, of course, that gas worth it. Uh, right, okay, central temperature is uh, is uh, updated for today. So now we are under 5 degrees uh, with the CT provisionally at 4.9. That is 1.2 degrees uh, above average. That's provisional to the 24th of um, January. That's actually a little bit lower than that in reality because there's all this downward direction. So by this point, we're possibly at around 4.5. I don't know what, exactly where we are right now, but I wouldn't be surprised if we're around mid-fours, something like that, if you take into account the downwards correction that we're likely to get. So, yeah, a little bit above average, but not excessively so. And actually, if we, you know, did come in around 4.5 uh, by month's end, that would actually be a little bit under the uh, 91 to 2020 average. So it would be a little bit cooler than our... Uh, most recent uh, long-term temperature average, uh, probably very close to 81 to 2010, and still above average over 61 to 1919. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's go to the Blackpool today. So the line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Blackpool. Starting off above average with the upper air temperatures at the moment, although we have got an inversion going on on the surface, which means it is colder on the surface and it is a lot. Um, looks very zonal, uh, really, doesn't it, over the next uh, few days. So we're going to have uh, warmer and cooler and warmer and cooler and warmer and cooler sectors alternating with one another. Um, there are, uh, there is a little bit of cold snap that's uh, there around the uh, turn of month. We talked about this in yesterday's video. We might pull in like some cold air for 24 hours uh, around the 31st of January to 1st of February. It won't last. Uh, the next warm sector will then uh, push back in. And uh, we've perhaps lost that cooling trend really through the first week of February now. Um, as well. Although there are still the cold outliers down here, but there's also warm outliers up there. So um, anything from like the 4th, 5th of February onwards, um, this period just here, you know, does come with, with large health warnings attached to it. It does look more unsettled though as we go into February. So again, lots and lots of dry weather uh, to the end of January. But as we go through the first uh, 10 days or so of February, it does look as though things start getting more unsettled then. Two meter temperatures are looking like this. Remember, Blackpool is coastal, so uh, it won't be as cold as like inland. We're starting off pretty chilly at the moment, but it's just hovering not all that far from long term average. And there may be a bit of a cooling trend later on in the first week of um, of uh, February. And in terms of snow road, not much doing there. Again, this is a coastal location, though, but not much doing in terms of snow. Uh, temperature normally is on the 25th of January to 2nd of February, uh, above average, a mild average week coming up, and precipitation anomalies from 25th of February to 2nd of January are drier than normal, except in the far northwest of Scotland, where it does turn a little bit wetter than average. A screen by map from EarthNorthSchool.net shows that high, high pressure is well and truly in control of weather, but we have got some low pressure up towards Greenland and Iceland. Some of the latest UK Met Euro uh, right is looking. So high pressure ridging in from off the Atlantic into west of Europe, keeping us mainly dry at the end of the uh, week. And then into the weekend, we're going to find high pressure around Biscay, keeping wind in from west. It will be a mild day on uh, Saturday, potentially very mild, maybe a little bit cooler, especially in the north and northwest on Sunday. 
I mean, another low pressure dies through from sending into muddy. I could bring some wet weather, maybe even down into the south, and put in a rather colder northerly wind. Uh, but it won't be for long, you know, this is the little cold snap I talked about yesterday. Uh, so 24 hours of, uh, of cooler or colder weather, a bit of a cold snap from the 31st of January, last day of January, first day of February. Winds in from the north, but very, very quickly see already by midnight on 1st of February, winds are backing into the west again, and the cold air being shunted over towards much of northern and eastern Europe. Icon uh, looks like that. So uh, once more, high pressure is bridging in from the southwest over the next few days. Early next week, we pull down something a little bit colder from the uh, northwest with those northwesterly winds. So it's like a very brief colder interlude. Um, early next week doesn't last all that long at all. Winds back into west again as low pressure starts coming back in from off the Atlantic. GFS uh, midnight run again showing the high pressure bridging up. From the southwest, and then we're in this flat sort of westerly zonal type flow over weekend, which will be pretty mild. Early next week, we put wind into the north again, so that's uh, midnight on last day of January. Wind going into the north, that could bring some wintry showers into the far north and northeast, but it'll be a one day wonder because winds go back into the west by the time we get through. Tuesday, this time next week, first day of February. And then beyond that, heading up towards day 10, we've got this uh, classic pattern that we've had on and off, you know, since uh, late August, with high pressure to our south and east, low pressure away to the northwest, pulling up this uh, warm southwesterly wind. So looking very mild um, through the course of next week, through the first days of February. Into our extended range, gradually turns a bit more unsettled. The high pressure slips over towards eastern Europe. Low pressure starts moving in above the Atlantic. That turns us a little bit wetter and windier. Um, will be mild though. Winds are coming up from a southerly direction, but uh, certainly nothing doing from a cold perspective anyway from uh, the GFS Big Night Run right way up to the 10th of February. GFS 6Z uh, looks like that. So again, we've got the uh, high pressure close to the country from Friday to Saturday. A little bit cooler there, 6 a.m. on Saturday with winds in from the northwest, but won't last very long at all. Again, another very, very brief northwesterly as we get through into uh, mid uh, 6 a.m., I should say, on um Monday next week, 31st of January. Again, that just doesn't last long at all. Uh, um, it's all all being driven in by uh, the high pressure southwest, low pressure to the northwest. Some winds are remaining from a west or southwesterly direction. That's looking at day 10. A little bit more unsettled by that point. Wet and windy weather start to push in from off the Atlantic. Will that verify? Will the high pressure just carry on? We shall find out. Beyond day 10, uh, the GFS 6 uh, then starts going quite cold and unsettled with a low pressure taking south of these areas of low pressure, you know, taking the southerly track. Uh, so we begin to go much more unsettled later in the first week of February and a bit colder as well. Uh, and that's how we finish up with the uh, GFS 6 uh, So in a rather cold and unsettled pattern, attempting to raise the heights a little bit over Scandinavia, but not able to do so. Still too much energy coming in from off the Atlantic. But if you like cold weather, that is a little bit colder. And uh, probably colder for a little bit of snow, actually, with these areas of low pressure, more particularly for northern areas. If you're enjoying this video, please give me a smash your like button. Make sure you're subbed to the channel. Thank you so much for doing that. And drop a comment. Let's say about this in all of our videos. Thank you so much. Uh, right, GM. Again, high pressure is ridging up from the southwest. It brings a lot of dry weather through the uh, weekend into a part of next week. And then we get through to the beginning of next week. This is 31st. And the wind going into the 31st of January. Wind's going into the uh, northwest. Will be a little bit cooler. Uh, maybe for the north, colder early next week. Again, we pull the wind back into the west. So through the course of next week, so increasingly mild, really, until we get to day 10, where we go into a rather cold, showery, northwesterly type flow. And then the ECM uh, looks like that. So, uh, again, it's all the idea of this high pressure being to the south of the country, with lower pressure up to the north and to the northwest as well. A bit of a colder northwesterly there, as this low pressure zips through. Uh, Sunday into Monday, that'll take wet to through the south, maybe a little bit of winchiness on the leading edge of that low, the winds then pulling into the north early next week, very briefly before we pull the wind back into West CM. by day 10, quite interesting, but probably won't verify, we've got an area of high pressure ridging through the UK and trying to get to Scandinavia, could that be setting up a Scandinavian high uh, for, for February? Um, I doubt it, but I suspect that will be gone <laughs> on the uh, 12Z ECM. But on this particular chart, the ECM is trying to reach a high pressure towards Scandinavia around day 10. 
precipitation uh, type forecast based on the ECM run from Tretro.com showing lots of dry weather over the next few days with some showery bursts coming and going. Uh, and then over the weekend, uh, it does sound quite interesting. That low zips through being rain to itself. On the northern edge of that low, there is some snow potential, particularly through northern Ireland, Scotland, northern England, north Wales, and maybe parts of the Midlands. Um, again, I think the track of this low, very uh, unlike to work out like this. So I would be really surprised if there's any snow around over the weekend. But we'll keep an eye on it. You know, we've I mean, only done two so far. I've only done two snow watches, I think, so far this winter. So if this did verify, if it's somebody tracking low over weekend, pulling wind into the north idea, then I would be able to do a snow watch, um, which would be, uh, you know, rather exciting, actually this winter but i would be surprised if it works out like this but anyway that's what the e7 is showing today so there's some snow sipping through central parts of the country over weekend then we're going to this cold showery northwesterly uh, which brings winter showers into northern and western areas uh and then beyond that it gets a little bit milder so we go back towards rain and then by daytime got the ridge building through the uk up towards scandinavia uh turning things drier by that point and these are the options on the table within the ecm ensembles today for day 10 which gets us to be 4th of february 16 members of the ecm ensembles have high pressure over france and low pressure out in the north atlantic that's going to be reasonably dry and will be mild or very mild 15 again with high pressure just to our south, low pressure to the north and northwest. That's going to be dry and pretty mild uh, once more. That does include the um, control run. We've got 11 with high pressure again centred over France. Low pressure out green and Iceland. Again, we bring the wind in from the southwest. And then finally, we've got the 9 down here. It does include the ECM operational run. That's what we should be looking at. But Rich is a high pressure through the UK and tries to get it to Scandinavia with lower pressure further out to our west. So that idea of like reaching the high pressure will scan over around day 10, not particularly well supported by the ECM and its ensembles. Most ensemble members are more in line around day 10 with what the GFS, for example, is showing, which is just high pressure over France and continental Europe and a relatively mild southwesterly flow. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got, and this will get us to the 9th of February, 27 members of the ECM ensembles, we'll have high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, and winds will be in from the west. And then 24 have high pressure over Scandinavia, but reaching down into the west of Europe and maybe bringing in like a gentle sort of easterly type flow. So that's drier and colder, and certainly with a risk of frost and fog. If we took the high pressure any further north of Scandinavia, then we would start bringing in a proper easterly bow, of course. Uh, right, CFS finally. So these are 500 millibar heights broken down into wheat bids. The first wheat bid will take us from the 25th of Janu January to the 31st with high pressure just to our west and southwest and winds remaining in from west sea direction. So a lot of anti-tonic influences and uh, milder as well. Week uh, 2 will be the 1st of the 7th of February. We've got high pressure balls further out into the Atlantic, but it's still ridging towards Biscay, and with low pressure around Iceland and Scandinavia, we keep wind in from west, but maybe a little bit of a cooler northwest. Of course, properly cold air is digging down into the east and the southeast of Europe, but we, as ever, will be on the periphery of that, but maybe a little bit cooler and more unsettled through the first week of February. Week 3 will be the 8th to the 14th of February. High pressure again, sitting just to our west southwest, low pressure to our west northwest. Winds again are in from a westerly direction. And then finally, week four, going to be the 15th to 21st of February with low pressure around Scandinavia, high pressure out in the middle of the Atlantic. Our winds kind of in from a westerly or maybe slightly northwesterly direction, possibly into the cold snap there, maybe, through uh, the uh, middle part of February. It might do. We'll see, Tunnel Town. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please do smash the like button. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. So if you're doing that, drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. And that's amazing and it's incredible. And thank you so much for doing that. The gas web is right. We're done with today's video. Just tell, tell up tomorrow. We will have the uh USA forecast after the 6 a.m. forecast. And there'll be a 10 to 14 day as well. So keep checking back to the channel for more. But for uh, today's videos and content, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.